It's popularly said and is attributed to King Solomon, written in the Proverbs, that laughter is the medicine for the whole body. And the book that we're going to share with you today is going to be in alignment with that say. We are talking about the book Anatomy of an Illness as Perceived by the Patient, written by Norman Cousins. Welcome to you all readers, you're on the platform Books and Life, and this platform is for those of you who are passionate about reading and those of you who always have yearned in their heart to start a reading culture but never knew where to start how to start what to read this platform is just for you we on build books and life we believe that it's not necessary to always learn through pain experimental and experiential pain if you understand what we mean but you can learn from the errors and the missteps and the weaknesses and the the ignorance of others through the book they put out there and draw the lesson out of it without you going through the trauma and the drama and all that comes with it. Books and Life is a platform that puts in front of you and at your disposal those books that are going to change your life forever. I'm telling you. I'm your host for today, Marilyn, and we start right away. The book that we're going to share with you today is an outstanding book. I mean, if you have somebody that you know that's going through a sickness a disease an infirmity of any type or even you watching us right now i want you to know that this book is going to change your life we are talking about a man and the book is written from the perspe perspective and the perception of that man his name is norman cousin we are in the 1960 and this man is you know is, is a man having a great life he's married and he travels and for a particular circumstance, he was put under a lot of pressure for a particular amount of time. And when you read the book, he says that during that period of intense stress, he actually came out of it with a disease and it was a degenerative disease. That means that his spinal cord was disintegrating and degenerating and the doctor did not know why and did not know how to to cause the body to stop that effect after months and months lying on the bed in hospital having gone through all types of exams having gone through all types of specialists in fact his case became a, a study case <laughs> a studying case and he finally asked the question to his different doctors that am i going to get well any day am i am i going to am, am i going to outlive this sickness and they told him no you just have some few weeks to live or if you are lucky some few months more so out of a holy anger normal cousin designed against the decision of his doctors to be discharged from the hospital and to go into a hotel room one thing that he had observed when he was still in the hospital was that his wife used to bring to him those uh, you know those uh, old movies with charlie chaplin's and all those people really funny and he would laugh and when he would really take time to laugh like 20 minutes 25 minutes laughing with the watching the movie in the night he would have less pain than usual and he would be some kind able to manage to sleep so he decided that he's gonna go under the prescription of laughter the same discipline that he was applying drinking 37 tablets a day he was drinking 37 tablets a day and yet there was no improvement the pain was still there he decided that he's gonna apply that same discipline but using laughter and a high level of vitamin c if i don't mistaken and he Set up, set up himself that he's gonna use. He's gonna take laughter in the morning at twelve, and he's gonna take in the evening, and he's taking going to take the last batch before sleeping. So he's gonna take session of 20, 20 minutes of laughter. And what makes the book outstanding is that at the end of the day, Norman cousin recovered from the sickness. Norman cousin not not only recovered, he he blossomed with life. He died of his normal death satisfied in his old age and that experience was so mind-blowing and life-changing to him that he became so interested into 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 whatever is related to health after that that very experience he had of 11 books on health healing and other works related to that and it's from that story that 
the medical field started thinking, hey, maybe there's something that we are missing here. We have been treating people as if they are just body. Okay, I'm, I, somebody is feeling pain here and we are just prescribing him a, a, a chemical substance. But maybe there is something more and there's something greater that has a greater influence over the body than any chemical substance that we can give to him, to him or her, which is his mind. And it's from this type of, of story that doctors and specialists were encouraged to dig into the power of the, of the mind, the human mind over the body. And it's from that that we have today uh, so, uh, fields like epigenetics that we talked with you about when we, were, we presented the book Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. That the power of our mind, our mind is so powerful that our mind can even change the structure of our own DNA. Can you believe that? Your mind can restructure your own DNA. That means even if you are coming from a family said to be the, to be diabetes, even if you are coming from a family where there is sickle cell anemia, even if you are coming from a family that has any type of, of you know disease that is degenerative, you can with using just using your mind reframe the patterns of your DNA and make sure that it does not follow you and it does not follow your seed after you. I mean this book is a book that you need to read whether you have been you are in sickness or in or in illness or not because we realize that the lessons i'm reading the lessons maybe i'm reading the lessons of the book because we realize by reading this book because this is a man that was at the age of death they wash their hands over him they say they cannot do anything more for him and just by taking session consistent session of laughter every day he recovered from the death if you can allow me to use that expression so it got me thinking if a man at the edge of the death just by disciplining himself that he will laugh every day can recover from death what about you and i we are not at the age of death if we decide that every day we're gonna we're gonna laugh 15 minutes what will happen to your skin what will happen to your hair? What will happen to your body and that digestive problem that you have for years now? What will happen to it if we can be consistent in doing that? So this book, Anatomy of an Illness, as perceived by the patient, is a book that you need to read and you need to make read around you, especially in this period that we are, we are going through since last year with Corona and all that related. This is the book that reminds us that above any microbe, above any viruses out there, there is nothing that is as powerful as the human mind. The human mind is so, so, so powerful. If, we can, if you can get your mind to focus on the right thing, if you can get your mind to focus on what you want and not what you, you fear, what your mind can do for you. The energies that will be operating from within your body, the energy that you will be giving to your own body to, to heal itself are outstanding. They are just outstanding. This book is a book that, I mean, it's a book that you need to read like once every year because it reminds you that your life is in your hands. Even your, the life of your body is in your hands. You don't have to, you don't have to submit, you don't have to surrender to all that comes with quote unquote age you don't have to to go through the degenerative system of the body you can decide that your body will live you can decide that your body will live this part of your body will live your heart will live your lungs will live your skin will live you can decide is into your hands and in this amazing story one of the things that norman cousins teaches us is that your life is in your hands you know people can help you People can assist you to a certain degree, but at the end of the day, life or death is in your hands. Your own life is in your hands. Your own death is in your own hands. If you had just, you know, accepted the, 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 the diagnosis of the doctor and say, okay, you know what, I just have some few weeks to go, maybe some few months and I'm done, we will not be talking about him today. But he has entered into history because when everybody was saying you're going to die, he said, that's, that's your own report. That's for you. When it comes to me, I know that I will live. I want to live and I will live because my body has been designed for life and nothing else but life. And he's, he stood on that. He stood on that. And it's amazing. It's amazing because how, much, how many people laugh every day? But how many of those people laughing can use laughter as a means to help their body to recover, to help their body to, to self-heal? How many people do that? 
So uh, above the lesson about the impact, the importance of laughter over the body, the importance of the mind of our body is the fact that through this story, Norman Cousins teaches us that our life, life is in your hands. Your life is not in the hands of anybody else out there. No matter what they told you, no matter what they made you to perceive, it's a lie. Your life is in your hands. It has always been, it will always be. It's on this note that we say to you, we'll meet next time. Don't forget to subscribe and also comment. We like to hear from you. Have you already read this book? Have you never? Have you read another book who has changed also your mind and your perception about the power of the mind over the body? Let's comment together. We'll see you in the next episode.